looking for a short and sweet class that revolves around the fundamentals of wheel pose, then this is the class for you. Go ahead, roll out your mat, and I'm going to roll the intro screen. Hello, magnificent human beings. My name is Landon Slaughter. This channel is all about fixing the kinks in your yoga practice by deepening your knowledge so that you can create a truly transformative practice for yourself. So let's find ourselves standing here at the top of our mat. Going to get things nice and loose and warmed up for wheel pose because there's a lot of stuff going on in this posture and we don't want to come into it cold towards the latter part of our class, right? But we're going to incorporate, obviously, you know, some fundamentals throughout. So hands either by your side or at heart center, setting that intention briefly. So inhale, exhale, relax your shoulders. Inhales through the nose, exhales out the nose. Setting that intention, something uplifting, soothing, calming, energizing, whatever you like. Very good. Okay, sealing your intention, three cleansing breaths. Inhale through the nose, inhale, inhale, inhale. And exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose, inhale, inhale, inhale. And exhale out the mouth. Very good. Last time, inhale through the nose, inhale, inhale, inhale. Big belly breath, hold, hold, hold. And gentle sigh. Ah, awesome. All right, getting warmed up with some of that full body breath. So inhale, hands up overhead. Squeeze your glutes. Exhale, gentle back bend. Ah, inhale, hands up. Exhale, swan dive all the way down, forward, fold. Very good. We inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Come on down. Fingertips on the mat, hind of those toes, coming into that ball, kind of your modified toe stand, right? Chin in the chest, round chest, stay here. Whenever you're ready, your next inhale brings your glutes up and exhales, relaxes your heels down, forward fold. Take a look at your left hand. You inhale, windmill it all the way up and around. Eye gaze follows, shoulder stack. Exhale, bring it all the way down. Right hand, same thing. Inhale, windmill, bring it all the way up and around. Exhale. Bring it down. Very good. And chin is last two rise, coming all the way up. Hands up overhead. Squeeze your glutes. Exhale, back bend. Ah. Inhale, hands up. And then interlace fingers together, hinging to the left. Exhale, brief crescent moon. Inhale to neutral. Exhale, opposite side. Inhale to neutral. And go ahead, swan dive. Come all the way down, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Fingertips on the mat. Come on down to that ball pose, rounding. Go ahead and bring your glutes on up. Forward fold, relax. Forward fold. Look at your right hand. Go ahead, slow. Inhale, windmill it all the way up and around. Exhale, bring it down. Left hand does the same thing, following with your breath. Nothing quick. Exhale, bring it down. Very good. Okay, chin, last to rise. Slow, steady, coming all the way up. Hands up overhead. Gentle back bend. Ah, inhale, hands up. And hinging to the right, brief crescent moon. Inhale to neutral, exhale opposite side. Inhale to neutral, exhale swan dive. Come all the way down, forward fold. Okay, from here, hands on the mat. Come all the way back into downward facing dog. Ah, 
Pedal it out, walk it out, move around. Okay. Weight shifts forward into your plank, holding strong in your plank. So this is a little part of our wheel pose, right? We need that strength to kind of hold our body up here because we're really only, you know, trusting in that arm and our you know, core strength to kind of keep us up, right, in our back. So hold, breathe. Downward facing dog. <laughs> Left leg, brief three-legged, bring it through, base of your lunge, and then hands up overhead, full crescent lunge, breathe. <sighs> hands come all the way down to the mat. Okay, standing splits, just briefly set it on down. Very good, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, relax. Fingertips on the mat, left leg comes all the way back, base of your lunge, lower down to your back knee, untuck your toes, and hands come up overhead, modified lunge. Okay, only holding here briefly in our modified lunge, we want to get into those hips a little bit, place your hand on that thigh, and then deepen on down. Bring your hands around behind you if you can. Roll your shoulders back, getting into a little bit of that back bend. So again, that whole element of our wheel pose has that back bend, right? So coming back, nothing too far. Hands on the mat. And come on back, downward facing dog. Excellent work. Okay, lower into a tabletop, wag it out, shake it out, move around, and instead of our chaturanga, we're going to take a moment to actually stretch out our wrists. So simply flip your left palm over, and don't put too much weight into this hand, rather just very gently kind of rocking, moving side to side, moving around very tiny circles, it's going to feel kind of Awkward, might hurt a tiny bit, but again, don't put any weight into your hand. Just, you know, doing something different with your wrist. Okay, switching sides, flipping that wrist over, moving it around, drawing little tiny circles, whatever feels best for you. Flipping it back. Okay, left hand, go ahead and spin it around, so spinning those fingertips so they're pointing back towards your knees, and don't put too much weight, you know, into this arm either, but really kind of stretching out this part of our forearms here, because this is obviously, you know, something that we really need, that wrist flexibility in our wheel pose. Spin it on around. Next side, right hand, spin those fingertips back, and just kind of moving things around. Waking things up in that forearm. Ah, spin it back around. Okay, hands come out, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Right foot, brief three-legged, bring it through, base of your lunge, and hands come on up overhead, full crescent lunge, breathe. And hands come all the way down to the mat, brief standing splits, lift that leg, set it on down, forward fold, very good. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, Chin is last to rise, coming all the way up. Hands up overhead, squeeze your glutes, back bend. <sighs> Inhale, hands up. Exhale, fold, come all the way down. Fingertips on the mat. Identify right foot, bring it all the way back. Base of your lunge, lower down to your back knee, untuck your toes. Modified lunge, hands come on up overhead. Just a couple breaths, feeling that lengthening through your torso. 
Exhale, soften shoulders. Hands on that thigh. Inch your front foot forward a tiny bit. And deepening. Holding here, and you can kind of go in that back bend right by releasing, bringing your hands around behind you. Deepening, gentle back bend. And coming back to neutral, both hands on the mat. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Awesome. Okay. Lowering back into tabletop. So this time, spinning both wrists around. So fingertips come backwards and just kind of moving back and forth a little bit. Again, if you do any drastic movements here, you could hurt yourself. So just being very conscious of what you're doing with your palms, hands, wrists, and everything. Gently spin those hands back around, flipping one wrist over, moving it around, flipping the other wrist over, moving it around. All right, very good. Go ahead, tuck your toes, and find yourself in a forward fold, however you would like to get there. Chin is last to rise, coming all the way up to standing. Hands come up overhead, back bend. Ah, inhale, hands up, exhale, and by your side, it's relax. Okay, getting lots of mobility happening in that spine, right? So obviously back bend is a part of our wheel pose. So we're gonna explore that here, bringing your fists onto that low back, or you can have your fingertips pointed up, whatever you like, fists, whatever is best for you. Wherever you are, go ahead and roll your shoulders back. Eye gaze comes up. And then just take a few breaths here, just breathing nice and gentle. Okay. Now remember, in our back bends, we inhale, heart open. Exhale, bend back. Inhale, heart open. Exhale, bend back. Take your time and don't let your neck drop all the way back. Still hold a tiny bit of strength there in your neck. Coming back from your back bend. Very good. All right. And chin comes into chest and just roll vertebrae by vertebrae coming all the way down relaxing in your forward fold getting stood up for your para hastasana hands to feet pose so you can take your peace sign fingers and wrap them around your big toes and put a bend in your knees and relax or if you want you can slide your palms all the way underneath your feet Whichever feels best for you, just relax. Counteracting that back bend. Release your hands, heel toe your feet together. And from here, inhale, half lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold, come on down. Hands on the mat. Down, we're facing dog. Okay, very, very good. Now it's time for starting to come into that wheel just a little bit. So we wanna shift all the way forward into that plank, lower all the way down to the mat. Untuck your toes and just release your hands. You can bring them by your side. Just lay down, a couple breaths, left or right ear on the mat. Just relax. Chin. 
chin on the mat. Bring your hands beside you. Awesome. Fingertips spread wide. Okay. And hands kind of by your pecs up here. And coming into a cobra pose, your bhujangasana. So leave your pubic bone on the mat. Trust the weight of your body into those arms and push off. Push, 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 push. Gentle back bend. Breathe. Set it on down. Move it out. Shake it out. And from here, rolling onto your back for our first brief shavasana. Getting finally ready for our wheel pose. Okay. So, I'm assuming you're watching this class because you can do wheel pose, or you're almost there, you know, or working on it, but um, if you don't feel comfortable in wheel, you can always substitute for bridge. So feet flat on the mat, knees are bent, palms down, and you can lift on up in to your bridge pose, right? So that's always an option for you. But if you're going to come into that wheel pose, then placing those fingertips down next to you and Lifting up into your wheel, you can very briefly balance on the crown of your skull and then come up, but, you know, never put a lot of weight in the top of your head. That's kind of more of a stability point. You really want to trust a lot of that weight into your arms. So sometimes it feels good to walk your hands really far back, almost so your fingertips are underneath your shoulders. Sometimes it's easier for folks to lift off like that. Some folks need a little bit of a wider stance. And so, you know, do this process relatively slowly because you don't want to, you know, torque or tear or anything like that. So first, balancing on the tip of your head, <laughs> lift your hips, and then press into the mat. Come on up. Then from here, lifting everything off into your wheel. And don't let your gaze drop all the way back in wheel. Still keep a little bit of strength in that neck. You don't want to look too, too far back. Pressing those hands into the earth. Feet strong, glutes gently engaged to help you lift. Setting it on down. And you can release. Excellent job. You can tick-tock your knees back and forth. So more advanced versions of wheel will have come into that full wheel and then you can exalt one leg or you can kind of bring one leg out. So different variations, right? But I think sometimes wheel pose is often quite difficult, intimidating for folks. So um, one of the tips I give is to just try this on the edge of the bed, right? Just coming off of the edge of the bed and then you can spot your hands and you can kind of feel how it feels to be upside down in your, in your wheel, at least for half of your body, right? Okay, one more wheel. Again, substitute for bridge if you want. That's perfectly fine. Fingertips come pointed down and... Sometimes it's best to be kind of on the balls of your feet, the heels. You know, you really have to kind of make this your own way because everybody's body is different. And depending if, you know, you're more top-heavy, bottom-heavy, everybody kind of has a different way of coming into this pose. But not really doing things quickly, right? Just staying present. Okay. Do a little bit of that waddle. And then, as you like, First, pausing on that crown of your head and then lifting. But again, never putting a lot of weight into the crown of your head. So work with your breath. 
coming into each segment as you please. Eventually, you can come back down from your reel and hug your knees into your chest. This is a nice kind of way to help alleviate a little bit of that tension in your low back. From here, simply coming into your final Shavasana. Still have plenty of time in our 25 minute class here, so just enjoying a nice short and sweet Shavasana. You've done so much work already in your class here, not cheating yourself of this time, you've gifted to yourself. So, feet fall out, arms fall out. Just relax, just breathe. Plenty of breaths to help you dissolve and relax. Your mind starts to wander, bringing you back to your intention. After a lot of heavy arm stuff in your practice, sometimes it feels good to almost spread eagle and really bring those hands and those arms out. About 10, maybe 15 more breaths, closing out your practice. Just breathe, relax. As you please, you can wiggle your fingertips, wiggle your toes, choosing to stay in your Shavasana if you like, or you may gently push yourself back up into a seated position <laughs> so we can bow together. Thanking each and every one of you for being here. I hope that this is helping you further your practice in your wheel, just really focusing on that wheel pose and all the little elements around it, the back bend and flexibility in your wrists and all of those good things. Do not forget to subscribe. Still more awesome yoga content coming your way. Thank you so much from my heart to all yours. Namaste.